Ijoma Oyato. Good evening and welcome. Tonight, a federal high court sitting in Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital territory, rules that Vice President Goodluck Jonathan can perform the executive duties of President Omar Musa Yaradua without a formal transfer of power. Former military head of state, retired General Muhammadu Buhari, suggests the constitution of a 15-member committee of credible Nigerians to visit Saudi Arabia to verify the exact location of the president as well as his state of health. The Senate directs its Committee on Foreign Affairs to open communication with the U.S. Senate on how to remove Nigeria from the list of countries classified as countries of interest for terrorist activities. A federal high court sitting in Abuja has ordered the Vice President Goodluck Jonathan to start exercising the powers of President Omar Musa Yaradua pending his recovery and return to office. In a ruling delivered by the Chief Judge of the Federal High Court, Justice Daniel Abutu, the court observed that President Yaradua has not remitted any letter to the National Assembly informing them that his vice should begin to exercise his duties pending his return from Saudi Arabia where he is receiving medical treatment. Justice Abutu stated that the Vice President cannot therefore become the acting president but can only carry out the functions of the president in his absence, which he has been doing and should continue to do as enshrined in Section 5, Subsection 1 of the 1999 Constitution. The ruling is the first in one of the four cases instituted against the president who has been receiving medical treatment in Saudi Arabia since November. Responding to the ruling, the Attorney General of the Federation, Chief Michael Ondaka, said no other person can question the Vice President when he performs the functions of the President, except the President himself, and with the ruling, he can continue to discharge such functions legally. The plaintiff, Barrister Christopher Onekwe, had in the suit asked the court to declare that in the absence of the President following his ill health and in view of Sections 5, Subsection 1 and Section 148, Subsection 1 of the Constitution, the Vice President can exercise the powers vested in the President in his absence. Judgment has uh, vindicated my position all along. You heard that the court said no other person or authority can question the vice president when he exercises the powers of the president. It's only the president that can say I didn't give you those powers. The court also went further to make a final declaration which has settled, I believe, all the crisis that the vice president in the absence of the president can carry on all the functions of the president depending when he arrives. So to me, Socket okay. is the judgment the plaintiff brought me here, canvas all issues, and we filed our counter affidavit. And the, as in the wisdom of the court, it found that I was correct, I was have been vindicated. The issue of section 145 has also been clearly stated that when it is a discretionary provision, the president may wish to transmit or not transmit, and when he transmits. The vice president is no longer, the acting president is no longer exercising the powers on his behalf, but exercising in his own right. But the, now the powers under section 5, which the vice president is asking, the court has said that he can continue to act on behalf of the president, all the powers vested in the president as in the absence of the president. And that has settled them. We have to bring together section 51 and 148 to say that the vice president can, in the absence of Mr. President, carry out the functions of Mr. President without necessarily transmit the letter to the National Assembly. That was why we are in court. And the court said yes, he can do that without necessarily waiting for section 145 to come into play. That's why we came to court and the court has upheld our argument saying that Judge and Goodluck, the VP, can lawfully execute the function of Mr. President vested in him until he returns back for his medical leave to take over from him. That is why we went to court and the court has offered a submission and argument. Meanwhile, the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, has described the protest rally against the continued absence of President Omar Musa Yaradua as a roadshow by opposition politicians and activists. The national chairman of the PDP, Chief Vincent Obulafo, said the rally is a ploy by some politicians to destabilize and truncate the nation's democracy and commended the Vice President Goodluck Jonathan and the National Assembly for defending democracy. The National Chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Chief Vincent de Bulafo, 
reacting to a protest march against the continued absence of President Omar Yadua, who is in Saudi Arabia for the treatment of a heart condition. Addressing a news conference, Chief Obulafo accused the opposition of exaggerating the state of health of the president and described the rally organized by some activists in Abuja as a mere road show. We find yesterday's road show by some politicians and some members of the civil society very unnecessary, shameful and completely out of turn with the national mood. It is clear an insensitive display of lack of respect for our institution, our leaders, and the placement of our common humanity. Chief Abulafo, who said he spoke to the president in Saudi Arabia, said the vice president has been steering the affairs of the state. But when asked why the party has not advised the president to hand over power to the vice president officially, Chief Obulafo evaded the question and went on a philosophical path. We believe and we pray strongly that Mr. President will soon return. As a knight of the church, we don't wish any sick man dead. And you, as a human being, as God-fearing, you don't pray that the president uh, dies. So we pray for him to recover. And therefore, we continue to pray for him to recover, and we continue to ask the vice president to wish him uh, to act, uh, to, 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 to continue working uh, uh, seriously on behalf of all of us Nigerians. Well, we have commended him. He's doing very well. And I think very soon, Mr. President will return back to this country. <laughs> The absence of President Yadua from the country for over 50 days has continued to raise dust, but the leadership of the party is confident that the nation is on the path and will achieve all goals of the present administration. Neil Taiwe, Channel's Television News. Well, the controversy over whether or not President Omar Musa Yaradua should hand over to his vice while away on medical treatment is another indication of the need for the Freedom of Information Act. The Newspaper Proprietors Association of Nigeria express, expressed this view through a press statement. They took a swipe at the three arms of government for failing to observe the provisions of the Constitution to enable the Vice President act as President while the President is away. The group particularly criticized the two chambers of the National Assembly for failing to pass the necessary resolutions for the handover. In the group's words, by their resolution of last Tuesday, the House of Representatives has clearly not behaved as a House of our own representatives, nor has the Senate served the Nigerian people better by their own resolution of the same date to simply invite the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Al-Hajji Yale Ahmed, to brief it on President Yaradur's health. <laughs> 